What? Everything qualifies? Welcome back to the channel. This week I wanted to do a quick video on the changes to the EV tax credits that happened this last week. Uh, previously, it was kind of interesting which Teslas qualified for the EV tax credit. Um, as you can see in this chart, um, Tesla Model 3s were under a $55,000 MSRP limit. That means if it costs more than $55,000, you didn't get the credit. But Model Ys were either $80,000 or $55,000, dependent on whether there were seven seats or five seats. We'll get into it in a little bit why this was, but you can see the seven seat variant had an $80,000 cap, but the five seat variant only had a $55,000 cap. What this meant was a lot of the Model Ys, once you added what you wanted to, your paint color, your rims, may not have qualified under these old caps. But let's get real quick into where this all comes from. If you go to the IRS website, and you can see here, here's the IRS website listed up above. There's two main things that qualify, and it's important to note, the first thing is you have to qualify based on your AGI. And you can see here it talks about the different limits for AGI and who qualifies. Um, take a look at that chart, but also the vehicle has to qualify. And for now, the vehicle qualification is strictly based on MSRP. And you can see that if we click on the link, there's a link of index of qualified vehicles right here. It'll take us to listing of all the manufacturers. If we scroll down to Tesla and we click on that, you can see now it's changed. So basically the Model 3 is a $55,000 cap for all trims and the Model Y is an $80,000 cap for all trims. So this is new. This is really new. Why does this happen, you say? Well, one thing that's important to note that when Congress writes laws, it doesn't write all of the details of the law that you need to implement the law. It basically leaves it up to the Secretary of the Treasury or the IRS to write the details of the law. Now, when Congress wrote this law, it did indicate that it was letting the IRS decide which vehicles qualified under which types, either SUV or sedan. And it even suggested that they use the EPA or the NHTSA guidelines, but the IRS didn't do that. What they did is they went to the section 179 section of the code. And specifically this section is when you wanna buy a vehicle and expense at your business. But in that section, it talks about what is an SUV. And what is an SUV is determined based on gross vehicle weight rating. So when they interpreted the EV credit law, they looked at gross vehicle weight ratings for all cars. This includes uh, Mach-E's, this includes ID4's. And if the gross vehicle weight rating was under 6,000 pounds, it qualified as a sedan and it had a cap of 55,000. If it was over 6,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating, they called it an SUV and it had the $80,000 cap. Hence the reason the seven seaters had a higher cap than the five seaters because they weigh more. But now this week, that's all changed. So now the IRS, instead of using the Section 179 guidelines, is now using the guidelines set forth kind of by the EPA, where all Model Ys are considered an SUV, all ID4s are considered an SUV, all Mach-Es are considered an SUV. So they all qualify now for $80,000 an SRP limit. So what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and build our car and see what that looks like. All right, let's build our Tesla. We're gonna build a Model Y. Starts off at 54,990, interesting, just under the $55,000 cap. But let's make it red, which costs $2,000 more. Let's add the induction wheels, cost another 2,000. Let's throw in a tow hitch, cost 1,000. White seats, 1,000. Where are we at now? We're at 60,990. We would be over under the old rules, but not the new rules. If we make it a seven seater, we're at 64,990, still under the 80 but not under the 55. Let's add enhanced autopilot, 70,990. Let's add full self-driving. Now we're at 79,990. So we are $10 under that 80,000 cap with a five seater. Let's go to performance and let's make it red. We'll have the Uber turbine, five seat layout. And if we had the enhanced autopilot, we're at 68,490. If we have the full self-driving, we're at 77,490. So all different models that we build are gonna fall under the $80,000. Now, if you do the regular one, right, with everything we did, we're at 79,990, so we're $10 under. So you definitely wanna make sure when you build the car, because prices changes and they went up this week, that you're gonna be under that MSRP cap. But if you are, you're gonna qualify now for $7,500 on basically all trims. So 
great news this week. Um, and again, this is really until March when the IRS will come out with its interpretation of the rest of the Inflation Reduction Act, which talked about things such as where the battery, comp what the battery components are, where the car is manufactured. That's going to change things. Hopefully, all Teslas will still qualify, but you never know. So if you're going to get a Model Y, now's the time to get it with these new caps in place. So. I don't know, hopefully interesting information for you. I found it very interesting. Didn't really come out much in the news, um, but it's very, very important. And this includes, again, not just the Model Y, but the Mach-E and the ID4, they all qualify. So if you're going to get an EV, now's the time to get out and do it. Well, I hope you found this video informative. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, or if you didn't, like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.